Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last... <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. As we look in at the Burns home today, we find the head of the family reading the morning paper while her husband tries to get it from her. <laughs> Gracie, I'd like to see the paper, too. Mm, yes, dear, as soon as I finish reading Luella Parsons' column. You see, we top newspaper columnists have to check each other. Now, don't compare yourself with Luella Parsons. She's the first lady of Hollywood. She's the reigning queen. Well, she certainly has poured it on this week. <laughs> Finish reading Luella's column so I can have the paper. Yes, dear. Well, listen to this. Exclusive. Cesar Romero was seen at the Macombo last night with Lana Turner. What does she mean, exclusive? I have the same item in my column. You have? Well, sure, I'll read it to you. What star was seen where last night with whom? <laughs> word for word. I put that in every day. It always fits somebody. <laughs> You're dynamite. Go back to Luella's column. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, here's an interesting item. Phil, take it or leave it, Baker, has arrived in town from New York and is looking for an apartment. <laughs> and silly man. <laughs> uh, he probably won't find an apartment in Los Angeles. Well, even if he does, imagine driving clear to New York to work every day. <laughs> he brought the program with him. Oh. Oh, by the way, he, um, he telephoned and said he was going to drop in to see us. Oh, good. I'd like to see him again. Remember back in our vaudeville days when you and Phil Baker were both courting me? Yeah. Phil was awfully cute. Mm. And what a snappy dresser. You know, he's the first man to wear pleats in the front of his trousers. Really? Mm-hmm. Of course, it was sort of an accident the way he discovered it. He caught his pants in his accordion one night. <laughs> I see. Gracie, was it hard to choose between Phil and me? Oh, of course not, darling. I knew there was only one man for me. Sure. And when Phil married that other woman, I knew which one. <laughs> well, have you ever wished you'd have married him instead of me? Oh, not for a moment, darling. It'd be awful married to a man who ran a quiz show. He'd come home and say, hello, dear, had a nice day? And I'd say yes, and he'd slap $64 in my hand. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That okay, be okay, it's too late now. Too late, too late, too late. Well, He's got anyway. a wife and serve her. <laughs> Someone at the door. Well, I'll answer it. Uh, you finish reading Luella's column. Hello, George. Well, Phil Baker. Mm -hmm. Come in, Phil. George, it's good to see you. How's my favorite radio star? Your favorite, Phil? Yes, how's Gracie? <laughs> <laughs> She's fine. Oh, Gracie, here's Phil Baker. Well, well, Phil, how are you? You look wonderful. You look wonderful, too, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phil, you haven't aged one year. Neither of you, Gracie. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and, Phil, you're doing so well. You're very successful yourself, Gracie. <laughs> <coughs> and, George? Yes? You have a bad cough. <coughs> <laughs> Thanks. Phil, we were just talking about those vaudeville days when you and George were rivals for my hand. Yeah, whenever the three of us would go to dinner, George and I would fight to see who'd get the money out to pay the check. Yes. <laughs> One night you fought so hard, you tore my pocketbook in two. Yeah. <laughs> well, so much for pleasant memories. Say, I wonder if you two could help me find an apartment. Oh, 
Well, I guess the apartment houses are a little crowded out here. Crowded? I walked up to one yesterday to see if there was a vacancy, opened the door, and three families fell out. <laughs> so crowded that even Kilroy couldn't get in. My goodness. But surely you'll find something. Gracie, I'm convinced of one thing. Los Angeles apartments houses are full. Not for years, not for life, but forever. <laughs> What a shame you're not a veteran. You know, it's simple for a veteran to find a place to live. It is? Oh, sure. All he has to do is re-enlist. <laughs> I, I wish we could help you, Phil, but uh, I'm afraid it's impossible. Well, I'd better run along and keep looking. Oh, oh Phil, before you go, I, um, I want your opinion on something. You know, um, they're planning to star Clark Gable in the Huxton. Now, Gracie, don't bring that up again. But since that's a story about radio, I think someone from radio should play the lead. Gracie, I'm not going to... Well, who'd you uh, have in mind? Well, um, don't you think there's somebody right here in this room who'd be better than Gable? Yes, but I'm too busy looking for an apartment. So long. <laughs> Now, Gracie, I want you to forget the idea of me replacing Gable. Yes, dear. Is that clear? Yes, dear. That's the last you'll hear of it. Good. By it, I mean replacing Clark Gable. Gracie. By replacing, I mean substituting for him. Gracie. By I... him, I mean Clark Gable. <laughs> Look, I By don't... Gable, I mean the man you should replace. <laughs> now, that's enough. All right, all right. Even if you bring it up, I won't discuss it again. Good. Let's drop the subject. By subject, you all mean... Right, all talking? right, all right, all Second Street. Gee, that, that, that was really a great tune, Meredith. And it still is, Bill. What brings it to mind now is Alfred Mirror's fine painting of Times Square in our newest Maxwell House coffee ad. Yeah. You'll find it on page 96 in the new issue of Life magazine. Oh, I've seen it, Meredith. Mirror calls his painting The Crossroads, that, of course, being what Times Square really is. With its crowds and its lights, its sparkle, it's a glittering symbol of Manhattan, a magnet for millions and a vivid, unforgettable part of the American scene. You know, in its own way, Maxwell House coffee is truly a part of the American scene, too. For just as coffee is America's favorite drink, so Maxwell House is America's favorite coffee, bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Northeast, south, and west, it's Maxwell House wherever you go. Flavors back of this popularity story, the rich, satisfying Maxwell House flavor that results from the masterful blending of these premium Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness, Medellins for richness, Bucamarangas for full body, still other choice coffees for vigor, all adding up to great coffee at its flavor peak. So friends, why not enjoy the very best in coffee goodness? coffee pleasure. You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Thanks, Mr. Postman. You appear downcast, Mrs. Burns. What cast you down? Oh, my husband still refuses to replace Clark Gable in the Huxters. But I'm not giving up. That's the true American spirit. We don't give up. We take one shellacking after another, but finally we win. That's the democratic way. 
Sounds more like the Republican way. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, why don't you just order your husband to try out for that picture? Why, Mr. Poston, a wife can't give orders. The husband gives the orders and the wife must obey. <laughs> <laughs> You're so whimsical. Well, you see, George doesn't trust my judgment. Now, if someone like Luella Parsons said he should replace Gable, he'd believe it. Miss Parsons is awfully nice. I bring her all the tidbits of Hollywood gossip I pick up on my route. Oh, are you a snoop, Mr. Postman? Oh, no. But I can't help it if I happen to see something over a transom. <laughs> but you're... You're too short to see over a transom. Not when I stand on my mail bag. <laughs> oh, Mr. Postman, I've got it. I'll get Luella Parsons to say that George should replace Clark Gable. How? Well, I'll give her a scoop. For a statement like that, she'll need more than a scoop. She'll need a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Luella is home. I'll give her some red-hot scoops for her column, and then in return, she'll use her influence to get George in that picture. Yeah? Why, it's Gracie Allen. Hello, Luella. Hello. Come on in, Gracie. My, you're looking well. Well, so are you. You've certainly lost a lot of weight. Well, thanks. Now when people call you Hollywood's biggest movie columnist, you'll know it's a compliment. Well, I've always pretended it was. Oh, you do have a wonderful column, Luella. My poor little effort just can't compare with it. Oh, you're wrong. Your column is much more interesting than mine. Oh, no, yours is better. Oh, no, yours is better. Oh, uh -huh, no, yours is. <laughs> well, perhaps you're right. Well, I wish you'd hold out your hand before you stop. <laughs> Was there anything special you wanted to see me about, Gracie? Oh, yes. We, um, we newspaper women should stick together. Um, I came over to give you some gossip items for your column. Now, that's very kind of you. Oh, these are real red-hot scoops. They won't only stop the presses, they'll melt them. Oh, <laughs> tell me quick. Gracie, tell me. Oh, well, all right. Do you know about Charles Boyer and Ingrid Bergman? No, what about them? He's French and she's Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> that's your school. Oh, that's only one of them. Listen to this. You know the movie theater where the stars put their footprints in cement? Yes, of course. Groman's Chinese. Well, I happen to know that Groman isn't Chinese. <laughs> Gracie, I think I'll give that one to Walter Winchester. Oh, Luella, you're so unselfish. But here's a scoop I want you to keep all to yourself. One of Hollywood's best-known couples aren't really married to each other. Oh, I couldn't print that. Hmm, too spicy, huh? <laughs> yes, but I'll admit I'm curious. Say, who's the couple that's not married? Abbott and Costello. <laughs> I was right. I couldn't print that. Well, that should give you enough material for a week, Luella. Now, in return, I'd like you to do me a tiny little favor. Well, certainly. What is it? Well, I'd like you to say in your column that Clark Gable should be replaced in the Huxes by Gracie Allen's handsome and talented husband. I thought you were still married to George Burns. <laughs> well, I am. And you want him to replace Clark Gable? Well, why not? They're practically twins. <laughs> why, if you were describing them, I'll bet you'd use exactly the same word. You're right about that. I'd look at Gable and say, oh, what a man. Then I'd look at George and say, what, a man? <laughs> but, Luella, 
Gracie, I couldn't print in my column that George Burns should replace Clark Gable. Oh, sure you could, Luella. Give George a big spread. Don't you think the one he's got big enough? <laughs> oh, all right, Luella. Let's have a showdown. You're a friend of Clark Gable, so you bring him over to my house this afternoon, and we'll compare him with George. Well, knowing you, Gracie, that's probably the only way I'll ever hear the last of this. All right, I'll have Clark Gable at your house at 4 o'clock. Oh, good. Just wait till people read your column tomorrow. Who? They'll all send Gable Ungentine. Ungentine? <laughs> oh, sure, the headline will read, Gable forced out a picture by Burns. Goodbye, Luella. Goodbye, Gable. <laughs> Clark Gable is coming over here? Yes, dear, so Luella Parsons can compare the two of you. Now, wait a minute. I haven't got a chance. Women faint over that guy. They faint over you, too. Like when? Like when I married you. My mother passed out cold. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't like it. Gable is one of the top actors in Hollywood. Well, what are you worried about, dear? Don't forget you were a runner-up for the Academy Award Oscar last year. I was runner-up? Certainly. When the man on the stage said, send someone up for Mr. Milan's Oscar, didn't you run up? Oh, I was the runner-up, well. yes. <laughs> Look, let's call this off. Gable gives me an inferiority complex. Oh, nonsense. Just meet a man-to-man. -man. When he walks in, jump on a chair and look him right in the eye. <laughs> you see, he's bigger than I oh, am. Oh, dear, stop worrying. All you need is a little pep talk. Now, listen. What if Gable is bigger? Don't forget that a mouse can frighten an elephant. Mm. A, a, a little flea can worry a dog. Mm. A, a tiny germ can knock out a big man. So if you start to lose confidence, just think of yourself as a mouse, a flea, and a germ. That's some pep talk. I feel better now. A mouse, a flea. Come in. Hello, all. Oh, hello, all. Oh, oh, it's you, Meredith. Say, maybe you can give George a little confidence. He's got an inferiority complex because Clark Gable is taller than he is. Why, George, size is of no consequence. Now, you take the case of little old Don Honrath back in my hometown of Mason City, Iowa. He was the shortest man. Uh, Meredith, I'm not... Well, sir, little old Don didn't let his size stop him. No. Always went hunting with the rest of us fellas. That's nice, but... Only trouble was his hunting boots gave him an earache. <laughs> his hunting boots hurt his ears? Yeah, when he put them on, he was in them, up to him. <laughs> well, I'm not interested and As for in... romance, Don courted the prettiest girl in Saragorda County Took her to every dance Her and a package of Band-Aids Band-Aids? Yeah, she was skinny And when they danced, her hip bone cut his face rather severely <laughs> Uh, well, that's enough, Don's Meredith. Don's rival for this girl's hand was a fellow who stood six feet three. Don. But who I do mean, you Mer think she finally married? The tall fella? No, uh, sir. She married little, little Don. Don. No, married a brush salesman from Des Moines. That's fine. <laughs> so you see, George, a tall fellow has no advantage over a short fellow. Well, that's a great story, Meredith. She got the brush salesman, and I'm giving you the brush. Out, 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 <laughs> Meredith. <laughs> Years and years ago, the popular version of Toselli's Serenade. It's Meredith Wilson's music. Thank you. 
George, stop worrying about Clark Gable being bigger than you are. The real test between you will be something that size doesn't even enter into. What's that? Romantic technique. Luella Parsons will judge your lovemaking abilities. You mean Gable and I will make love to Luella and she'll pick the winner? Yeah. Oh, I can see it now. You and Clark Gable face Luella. Yeah. You start the contest. Mm -hmm. You grab Luella. Yeah. You hug her. Yeah. You kiss her. Yeah. She swoons with ecstasy. Yeah. Now it's Gable's turn. Yes. He grabs me. Yeah. He hugs Wait me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Gable grabbed the wrong woman. I, I know, but it's too late now. Mm. He, he wraps me in his strong arms. I'm helpless. I step in and grab Gable. I struggle like crazy. Mm. I bite. I scratch. Yeah. I hope I don't hurt you, George. <laughs> You're biting me? In my excitement, do I know what I'm doing? Oh, yeah, you're excited. <laughs> now, Gable has me in his arms again. Hmm. I plead with him to let me go. Now he lets you go. Now he Oops, gra he grabbed me again. <laughs> I step between you, and Gable sits down on a chair. Yes, now it's your turn. Yeah. You grab Luella. Yeah. You hug Again, you... I get Luella. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, that must be Gable. Now, come in. Well, hi, Burns. Oh, Bill, we thought you were Clark Gable. Well, I know everyone does. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just can't help myself, George. I just set the girls on fire. Why, when my pictures play at a theater, they make all the women sit in the balcony. In the balcony? Yeah, I start them smoking. That's the only place they allow it. <laughs> Bill, what Gracie meant was that we're expecting Clark Gable to arrive any minute. Really? How come? Well, I'm going to put George up against Gable. Gracie, why don't you just lean him against the wall? No, no, you don't understand. There's going to be a contest between them, and Luella Parsons will be the judge. Oh, is Luella coming over? Mm -hmm. You're looking for her. I've got a terrific scoop for her column. I found out that Ronald Reagan beats his wife, Jane Wyman, every morning. Oh, Bill, no. Yeah, every morning he beats her into the kitchen and grabs the first cup of Maxwell House coffee. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you can't blame him. Maxwell House is rich, mellow, delicious, the result of careful selection and blending of choice Latin American coffees, radiant roasted to perfection. Oh, by the way, Gracie, what kind of a contest is Luella going to judge? Oh, a lovemaking contest. I haven't agreed to that yet. A lovemaking contest between George and Gable? Mm-hmm. That's like a contest between the atom bomb and a water pistol. <laughs> Are you calling me a water pistol? Can you think of a better name for a little squirt? Hey, just for that, I'll show you. I'll make love to Luella. And, brother, you'll see some tall spooning. George, the only way you could do any tall spooning is with a cup of Maxwell House coffee and a tall spoon, believe well. me. <laughs> hey, that's a great idea. After all, Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure, yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. No wonder Maxwell House is bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Everybody knows Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. Oh, well, don't you worry, Bill. Luella will pick George. Why, with his physique and the effect he has on women, he should have been in a picture long ago. Yes, you're right, Grace. He should have been a mattress in the big sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, comedian. So long, hot lips. <laughs> See, here comes Luella Parsons up the walk. Oh, well, I'll leave the room. Now, the minute Luella walks in, you start the contest. Mm. Start making violent love to her. Yes. This is your chance to win. But Gable isn't here. That's what I say. This is your chance to win. <laughs> well, here goes. Wish me luck. Oh, George, the way you can kiss, I don't have to wish you luck. Kiss me. Good luck, George. <laughs> I'll be listening in the den. Hello, George. Say, there's something I want to tell you. 
There's something I want to tell you, too, you great, big, gorgeous hunk of woman. <laughs> Come here. Why, George, let go of my arm. Stop pulling me. Come here, you glamorous creature. <laughs> Come here, you siren. <laughs> oh, please, Luella, come here. <laughs> I'm mad about you. Really now, Joy? Mad, mad. You're so divine. Why do you write about those movie stars like Hetty, Hetty Lamar and Betty Grable? You're much more beautiful. <laughs> That's what I keep telling them at the studio. <laughs> Don't fight this, Luella. It's bigger than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could make beautiful music together. George, I'm so young. Come. I'll take you in my arms and carry you to the sofa. Mm. <laughs> Come, I'll take you by the hand and leave you. This is all so sudden. <laughs> it's love, Luella. Oh, how exquisite you are. Those eyes, those twin pools of blue desire. Those rosebud lips, that voluptuous figure. Is it thrilling to hear those things from a man? Yes, George, it's even thrilling to hear them from you. <laughs> then take me in your arms. Oh, not so hard. Aha! Uh -huh. Again I find you in the arms of a beautiful woman. Again? Oh, now, Gracie, let me explain. Oh, I don't blame you, Luella. I know how irresistible my little man is. Women are drawn to him like bees to the smell of clover. You're a bee and he's a smell. Gracie. You don't understand, Gracie. Oh, take him, Luella, but be good to him. Be good to my little Casanova. Bring him those little things he's used to, his pipe, his slippers, your salary. <laughs> Well, that does it. Take him, Luella. Fly away with him to some little nest, such as MGM. And put him in some picture, such as the Husters. <laughs> and when Clark Gable comes, I'll tell him the better man won. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you, Gracie. Clark Gable's away on a hunting trip. He can't come to your house until next week. Well, gee, if Gable won't be here until next week, <laughs> I'd better explain that my love scene with you was just an act. Oh, I knew that all the time. I was just going along with a joke. And you were a very funny one, George. I see. Take him, Luella. Uh, oh, at first I'll cry. Oh, <laughs> but as years go on, I'll just laugh. <laughs> uh, Gracie, uh, Gracie, uh, Gracie, <laughs> stop wrecking yourself up. <laughs> Luella is not going to recommend me for the Huxton. I know, but with acting like this, she may recommend me. Take him, Luella. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Our guest will be Clark Gable. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. We're a little late. Good night, folks. Get bird's eye. Get bird's eye golden sweet corn. Plump, milky sweet corn is tender and farm fresh as if you picked it from the stalk this morning. No work. It's cut whole from the cob, already washed for you, whistle clean. It's always young, tender, and wonderful eating. So get bird's eye golden sweet corn tomorrow. But be sure it's bird's eye. Remember. It can't be the same if it ain't got that name. Get bird's eye, bird's eye frosted food. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.